Hey guys, for the last two years I've been trying to reverse my male pattern baldness. So far I've found that hair thickness improves the scalp massage, but it doesn't stop it receding. I've uploaded a few videos on the topic and there have been hundreds of comments with different tips about regrowing hair. I ended up compiling a list of the top 20 and from there I selected what I felt were the most promising ones to put into my own routine. So in the first 12 weeks I followed a daily routine of 5,000 micrograms of biotin and some ashwagandha, both of those with breakfast, then zinc and magnesium before bed. I bought a 0.5mm derma roller and based on the needle length this was to be used once a week. Before derma rolling I used Nizarol shampoo and after rolling the topical application of coconut oil, peppermint oil and rosemary oil. Coconut oil is the base oil and the peppermint and rosemary are added in drops to achieve a desired concentration. After further reading I decided to modify my routine so for the second 12 weeks I opted for a 1ml derma roller. Uh, 0.5ml is associated with hair maintenance and a longer needle is required to stimulate new growth. I increased my topical application to twice a week instead of once and instead of two to three drops of the peppermint and rosemary oil I was putting in closer to 10 drops of each. I switched from a biotin tablet to something called a radiance capsule which contains lutein and selenium alongside the biotin. Uh, finally I reintroduced scalp massage three minutes a day but not in the days straight after the derma rolling as my scalp was quite sensitive. So onto the results, it's been a point of frustration for me that lighting makes such a difference to hair progress pictures. Not only natural versus artificial, but things like time of day, time of year, make it quite difficult to make a direct comparison between two pictures. Uh, to keep things as consistent as possible, I try and keep exactly the same head angle, and I also shave my hair to uh, six millimeters a couple of hours before I take the photo. In this latest picture, there's slightly more light, which gives the appearance of thinner hair. Subjectively, from looking in the bathroom mirror, I feel like my hairline has been maintained. There's small hints of new growth, but it's hardly a home run. I don't know what natural hair loss would look like across six months, but the pictures look quite similar to me. Here's a comparison to November 2020. Uh, this was after my first 24 weeks of doing the scalp massage. I'll quickly go over each part of my routine in a little more detail, and then I'm going to explain where I'm going from here. Someone made a good point in the last video that promoting blood flow to the scalp is only part of the solution. You need to have the nutrients there in your blood to help with growth in the first place, and that's where supplementation comes in. Things like biotin are said to be more effective if you're starting off with a deficiency, and the same could be true for the others like zinc, magnesium, omega-3, and vitamin D. The Nizarol shampoo is used once a week, and it's left in for five minutes before rinsing. It's a tip I got from a website called More Plates, More Dates, the active ingredient is ketoconazole, and that's meant to remove the buildup of DHT on the hair follicles. That's followed by derma rolling, which I'm convinced is beneficial. Uh, it's painful, but not so much that I'm hesitant about doing it. Uh, the one millimeter isn't twice as painful as the half mil, but I do notice the difference. I use what I think is called the STAR protocol, so I'm uh, rolling five times on the same strip of my scalp before moving on to the next section, and I go down, across, and both diagonals. Uh, you can get the odd blood spot, uh, your scalp might be red, but you're not aggressively pushing down with it. Then the oils, if you're using something with side effects like minoxidil, you should wait at least 24 hours after the rolling before you apply it, but that's less of an issue with the oils. It's meant to be around a 3% solution, uh, but I wasn't getting much of a tingly sensation, which I assumed is what I'm trying to achieve, so I added a few more drops each time, and now it's about 10 to 12 drops of peppermint oil with half a teaspoon of coconut oil. I also realised that while the absorption is something like nine times better doing it directly after derma rolling, I could still do it at other times. So I looked online and the advice is twice weekly application. So that's what I did for the second lot of 12 weeks. Personally, I leave it on, but a lot of people suggest that you just have it for 20 minutes and then shampoo it out. Uh, I time it so that if I'm going to the office or I'm meeting up with friends, my head isn't smelling of peppermint. Uh, but for most people, 20 minutes is probably easier. Finally, the scalp massage, I've previously done it for five minutes a day for 24 weeks and I felt like it was worth including again. Uh, this time I did it hanging off a of bed, which is known as the inversion method. So that routine is changing again. I'm not setting a time frame on this one because regrowing hair is a slow process. Uh, I will be updating in the community tab, you can find that on my channel, and that will be as often as I can keep convincing my wife to take pictures of her husband's balding head. My new routine is based on the big three, which I discovered when someone kindly pointed me to the subreddit Tressless, which is a quirky way of saying hairless. 
I highly recommend you check it out. There's plenty of success stories, mainly around finasteride and minoxidil, but tips on other solutions as well. One popular article outlined the big three, which are uh, Propecia, which would be finasteride, Rogaine, such as minoxidil, Nizarol shampoo, and a mention of derma rolling as well. I do derma rolling and Nizarol already. Peppermint oil was shown to be more effective than minoxidil, but that study was on shaved mice, so I'm not sure if that just means it regrows existing hair faster. I'm not set on peppermint oil, but some sort of topical application will be the replacement for minoxidil. The piece of the hair growth puzzle that I'm missing for now is Propecia, the ingested substance. I'm still worried about the side effects of taking finasteride, but one study has reassured me slightly. It took the standard doses of one and five milligrams and tested the effect of fractions of that dose. Uh, the results are in this graph. They show that taking 0.2 milligrams, a fifth of one pill, delivers around 90% of the benefits of the full dose. Now you could argue that dose may also deliver 90% of the side effects, but at the very least, it's a more cost-effective way to take finasteride. So if you were to take 0.25 milligrams, a quarter of a pill a day, that would cost around five pounds per month. I looked online for alternatives to finasteride and I found saw palmetto. This is extracted from uh, the fruit of a plant by the same name. Much like finasteride, it's mainly used as a pill for prostate health. I found this review of the saw palmetto research and while it doesn't deliver as strong or consistent results as finasteride, it appears to have some effect. In this study, cell cultures were treated to a dose of saw palmetto equivalent to 200 milligrams a day in humans. It reduced DHT levels almost as much as finasteride compared to the control. Uh, for the human trial, they added some other ingredients as part of a nutritional supplement and they managed to get positive results after six months. I've ordered mine from British Supplements. Uh, I have a four month supply and after that I'll reevaluate. I might consider, depending on the results, microdosing with finasteride as a next step. Finally, instead of scalp massage, I'm going to do morning yoga that includes several long holds in downward dog. Uh, this more closely follows the inversion method. This is because the scalp massage doesn't fit naturally into my day and yoga has benefits of its own. For the same reason, I'm also going to be doing four minutes of box breathing each day. This helps with both full body circulation and reducing stress. These are both important factors in mitigating hair loss. As always, any comments are welcome regarding the routine that I've chosen or any treatments that have worked for you. Uh, best of luck if you're on the same path as me and thank you for watching.